this one, subhanAllah, I thought of Muhammad. Uh, this one is Isaiah 42. Yeah. The first verse of Isaiah 42, it says, here is my servant. And Muhammad is known as Allah's servant. In Arabic, his name is Abdullah. He's so Allah only Abdullah. has one servant? So the rest of the prophets are not his servants? Is only Muhammad? I'm... <laughs> I, they're all sort of, but this is a special name. He but in chapter 19, verse 30, it. your Quran quotes Isa saying, He is Abdullah and a prophet. Oh, go to chapter 19, yeah, 19 sure. verse 30. See what Isa says as a baby, supposedly, but you believe it. Yeah, yeah. he said, Surely I'm a servant of Allah. He has given me the book and made me a prophet. So Muhammad is the only servant, huh? Forget everyone else. <laughs> okay, okay, let me keep going. Okay, sure, keep going. It says, yeah, it says, I will put my spirit, spirit, and in Hebrew, that's ruach, yep. ruach, on him. And the spirit here refers to angels, because Zechariah 6, 5, in Zechariah 6, yeah. 5, it says the spirits are, uh, the spirit is angels. Yeah, angels. can you show me where the spirit was on Muhammad? Uh, no, the, but uh, the spirit, uh, uh, the spirit gave Muhammad the Quran. No, what I'm asking you is, it doesn't say gave him the Quran, it says, I will put my spirit on him. He'll be on him, not he'll give him something. So can you show me where Gabriel came on Muhammad and remained on yeah, Muhammad? So, yeah, um, chapter six, Surah 16, verse 102. No, that doesn't say he came on him. It says he revealed to him the revelation. That's not what I'm asking. The verse says, came on him, rested on him. So where did the spirit rest on him? Because in the Gospels, the spirit of God rested on Jesus. Matthew 3, 16, Mark 1, 10. Luke 3, 22, and John 1, 32, 33, it says, The Holy Spirit came down in bodily shape like a dove and remained on him, Jesus. And then Matthew 12, 17 to 21, we are told there that Jesus fulfilled Isaiah 42, verses 1 to 4. Matthew even quotes it about Jesus. So can you show me where the Spirit rested on Muhammad like it rested on Jesus? No, I don't think I can show you. So why are you quoting a verse that says the Spirit will rest on him, not give him revelation to connect Muhammad when in the New Testament, God's Spirit, the Father's Spirit, rested on Jesus. Okay, so this this prophecy is about Jesus, alayhi salam? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, let me just keep going, okay? Yep. It says, and um, it says, he will bring justice. In Hebrew, the, the word is mishpat. He will bring justice to the nations. And uh, it says justice to the nations, not just the Israelites, mm -hmm. but the prophets, the Israelite prophets, never preached to the non-Israelites. But Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he brought judgment to the whole world. Not but just not according Israelites. to your Quran, Jesus also was for the world. Go no, to 1921 no, of the Quran. Not. Go to 1921 of the Quran. 1921? Yep. Okay, he said, even so, your Lord says, it is easy to me, and that we may make him a sign to the men, and a mercy from us, and it is a matter which has been decreed. He's a sign for who? To men. Men? And the word is alamin, and then I'm going to show. I'm sorry, it's nas. And then I'm going to show you it's uh, the word alamin, same language used of your prophet. And he's a mercy. Now go to 2191. Okay. And she who guarded her chastity, so we breathed into her our inspiration and made her and her son a sign for the nations. Oh, wait, nations. Well, interesting. <laughs> now go to chapter three of the Quran, verses three and four. He has revealed to you the book with truth, verifying that which is before it. And he revealed the Torah and the Injil aforetime, a guidance for the people. And he sent the Furqan. Surely they who disbelieve in the communications yeah, of you Allah. you went too far. It's okay. <laughs> so the Torah and the gospel, a guidance for who? For, for the Jews and Christians. No, does it? Well, yeah, in Christians because they're not just Jews. But still, what's the word that it says? What's the word? For the people. People. Now, the same language is used of your Quran. In chapter 2, verse 185. Chapter 2, verse 185 says, your, The Quran was sent down in Ramadan as a guidance for the people. Same language. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. Yeah. Okay, so the Quran doesn't agree with you that Jesus is only for the Israelites. And the Hadiths don't agree with you. Okay, but Sam, didn't the Quran say that Jesus came to the children of Israelites? And Muhammad came to the Arab, spoke in Arabic. He didn't go to Africa and spoke Swahili, right? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Just because Jesus went to the Israelites, that's true, but it doesn't mean his message won't be for the nations after he goes to the Israelites. Just like your prophet came to the Arabs and he spoke Arabic, but then they took the message all over the world. That's what happened with Jesus' disciples. That's exactly what there's a tradition.
Your prophet, that's what he said. But if, okay, but if Jesus was for the whole world, then why would his message get corrupted? <laughs> Who told you it's corrupted? You keep thinking it's corrupted. Okay. Yeah. And you're using the Bible, a corrupt book, to prove your uncorrupt Quran. Does that make sense? No, I'm not using the whole Bible. I'm using parts of it. Yeah, but then you have to use the Quran to determine which parts are not corrupt, which is circular reasoning. See, this part I accept agrees with the Quran, but I didn't know the Quran is true. Oh, because the Bible prophesied Muhammad. See the logic? Yeah, but that's what uh, Sheikh told us. He's, they said the, uh, all the parts that agree with Quran are authentic. The parts that don't agree are false. Okay, then if I say, well, how do I know the Quran is true? You'll tell me, well, because Muhammad is prophesied in the Bible. But the same Bible that contradicts Quran? Oh, yeah, but those parts are corrupt. Yeah, so verse 11, it explicitly mentions Kedar and Salah. Yeah. And, sorry, Salah. Yeah, yeah. Salah. So Ke Can Ke you prove that Muhammad yeah, is from Kedar? Yeah, okay. Inshallah. Prove it. So, Kedar is one of the sons of Ishmael. I know. Prove it's that Muhammad is a son of Kedar. Yeah, okay. I have an article where I quote Ibn Kathir, Ibn Ishaq, and they say that anyone who seeks to, tr to trace... Your prophet's genealogy, Ishmael, is a liar. And they were not in agreement. Some said he's a son of Kedar. Others said he's a son of Nebawith. So can you prove he's a son of Kedar? Yeah, from the Sirah of the prophet, Tabakat, Ibn Sa'ad. No, I have the Sirah. He doesn't say that. Read it. He says that some say Kedar, some say Nebawith. No, Tabakat, Ibn Sa'ad. Here, let me read it for you. Because you see, you're saying no. And I'm telling you, I quote them. Here you go. Hold on. al Sira al Nabawiyah, volume 1, pages 50-52. Let me read to you what he says. And I want to read to you Ibn Sa'ad. That's Tabakat that you're quoting to me, Ibn Sa'ad. There is no question of Adnan being of the line of Ishmael, son of Abraham, upon both of whom be peace. Well, there is a question. You've got to prove it. But anyway, what dispute there is relates to the number of forebearers that were from Adnan to Ishmael, according to the various sources. At one of the end of the spectrum, there is the extreme view that considers there to have been 40. This is the view of Christians and Jews who adopted it from the writings of Achia, the clerk of Armia. Jeremy bin Harqiya, as we will relate. Some authorities maintain there are 30, others 20, yet more 15, 10, 9, or 7. Now let me skip to read what he says here. This is why Malik, God bless him, did not enthuse over the attempt at tracing genealogy back to before Adnan. As for Malik, God have mercy on him, he expressed disapproval when asked about someone tracing his descent back to Adam and commented, whence comes to him knowledge of that? Where does he get this knowledge from? When he was asked about tracing back to Ishmael, he expressed similar disapproval, asking, who could provide such an information? Malik also disliked tracing the genealogy of the prophets, just as saying, Abraham, son of so-and-so, and Al-Muyatti -so, Al stated this in his book. al Suhaili commented also that Malik's viewpoint was analogous to what was related of Urwa bin al-Zubayr, who is reported to have said, we have found no one who knows the line between Adnan and Ishmael. Did you hear it? No one who knows the line between Adnan and Ishmael. You caught it? No one. Yeah, I got it. Okay, but I got more for you because I want to read Ibn Sa'd. Okay, let okay. me read Ibn Sa'd. Hold on, but let's finish it. Omar, oh, I'm sorry, let me, I skipped. It is reported that Ibn Abbas said between Adnan and Ishmael, there were 30 ancestors who are unknown. <laughs> unknown. Ibn Abbas is also report, reputed to have said, when he traced back lines of descent as far as Adnan, the genealogists have lied twice or thrice. And that skepticism is even more characteristic of Ibn Masood. These are all the Sahaba of your prophet, whose attitude was like that yeah. of Ibn Abbas. Omar bin al-Khattab stated, we carry back the genealogy only as far as Adnan. Abu Umar bin Abdul al-Bar stated in his book, Al-Anbafi Marfat Kabil, Al Ruwah, right? That Ibn Lahya related from Abu Al Aswad that he heard Urwa bin Al Zubair say, We never found anyone who knew. We never found anyone who knew genealogy back past Adnan, nor past Kahdan, unless they were using conjecture. Abu Al Aswad stated that he had heard Abu Bakr Sulaiman bin Abu Khaytham, one of the very most knowledgeable men of the poetry and the genealogy of Croatia, say, We never knew. Anyone with information going back to beyond Ma'ad bin Adnan, whether relating poetry or other knowledge, one more line, and I can read Ibn Sa'ad if you want. Abu Umar said that there was a group of the predecessors, including Abdullah bin Masood, Amr bin Maimun al-Azdi, and Muhammad bin Kaab al-Quraidi, 
who when they recited the verse from the Quran and those after them who no one but God knows would comment, the genealogists lied. Now, do you want me to read Ibn Sa'ad, Tabakat? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, there you go. He, on the authority of Ibn Abbas, he said, verily the prophet, whenever he read his gene genealogy, did not go beyond Ma'ad, Ibn Adnan, Ibn Udad. Then he kept quiet and said, the narrators of genealogy are liars. Since Allah says, there passed many generations between them. That's your prophet, by the way. Ibn Abbas says, yeah. the prophet would have been informed of the genealogy prior to Adnan by Allah if he, the prophet, had so wished. He, on the authority of Abdullah, verily recited, the tribes of Ad and Thamud and those after them, none saveth Allah knoweth them. The genealogists are liars. Are liars. You want me to go on? Because here, right. Ibn Sa'd, well, let me show you what he says. He gives you two contradictory genealogies. Guessing, he says, okay. your prophet goes to Aus bin Adam ibn Kedar, Kedar ibn Ismail. But now this one. Verily, the genealogy of Ma'ad ibn Adnan has been traced differently. In some narrations, it is Ma'ad ibn Adnan ibn Muqawwam ibn Nahur ibn Tira ibn Yarub ibn Yashjub ibn Nabit. Nabit ibn Ismail. They can't even agree. Is it Nabawith or is it Kedar? So how do you know, man? Uh, we don't know. So what, how are you going to prove to me Kedar is about Muhammad? No, but uh, do you agree that Kedar is related to Arabia? Yeah, but it's not just Arabia. If you read it, it's talking about the servant being the light of God's salvation to the isles and the ends of the earth. Why would you just read that part? Start reading from 6 all the way to 12. You're going to see he's going to be the light that brings God's salvation to the ends of the earth, to the islands, to the coastlands, yeah, that, to Kedar. That's Muhammad. Yeah, but the Quran. no, that's not the Quran because you're trying to prove the prophet is from Kedar. That's not what it says. It says this man is going to bring salvation to all these places. Didn't say he's an Arab. Okay, so then who is this about? It's about Jesus, the Messiah, bringing salvation to the ends of the earth. Yeah, just don't agree with you. Can you give me some rabbis and Talmud? Quote the Talmud for me. Show me in the Talmud. Show me in the rabbinic sources that they say, this servant is an Arab who will come from Mecca. Which Jew agrees with you? Uh, I don't know. Thank you. So if you're going to go to the Jews, the Jews don't agree with you. They think it's Israel. And there are Jews who believe it's the Messiah because there are Jews who believe in Jesus. So when you say Jews don't agree with me, can you quote one rabbi? Can you quote one Jewish source, Talmud, the Targums, the Aramaic prayers phrases of the Old Testament that say, this servant is an Arab. He's from Kedar and he'll come from Mecca. I, I don't know. I don't know if I can. So then why are you telling me no Jew agrees with me when no Jew agrees with you? <laughs> and not only that, how can Isaiah prophesy Muhammad yeah. when Muhammad contradicts Isaiah's prophecy? Do you believe? Where does he contradict? Are you sure? Isaiah 63, yeah, 16. Can you read that for me? But you are our father. Though Abraham does not know us, or Israel acknowledges, you are our father. Our redeemer from of old is your name. See? You caught it because you laughed. Isaiah said, <laughs> Stuck for Allah. Say it again. Stuck for Allah, right? Allah. So Isaiah Allah says, Allah. God is their father. Your prophet says, Allah is not their father. He's not your father. Yeah, can you show me from the Old Testament that Jesus is the son of God? Go to Proverbs 30, verses 3 and 4. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I attained to the knowledge of the Holy One. Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Whose hands have gathered up the wind? <clears throat> Who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is the name of, of, of his son? So you laughed again. Sure, you know. <laughs> but you're quoting the Old Testament. What is stuck for Allah? The Old Testament agrees with New Testament against the Quran. Okay. Now go to Matthew so, 12. Go to Matthew 12, 15 to 17 to see who fulfills Isaiah 42. No, I don't want to go to Matthew 12. That's New Testament. Yeah, but I'm trying to show you, according to the Hawariyun, the disciples of Jesus, who fulfilled it, Isaiah 42, because that's what you're quoting, right? Okay, sure. So go to my, Matthew 12, 15 to uh, 20, 21. Matthew 12, 15 to 21. Aware of this, Jesus withdrew from that place. A large crowd followed him and he healed all who were ill. He warned them not to tell others about him. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I have chosen, the one I love and whom I delight. 
I will put my spirit on him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not quarrel or cry out, and no one will hear his voice in the streets. This is Isaiah 42. Thank you, and it says Jesus fulfilled it. And in his name shall the Gentiles show us. And it said the spirit will be on him, right? Go to Matthew 3, 16 and 17. Read that for me. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened up, and he saw the spirit of God like a dove and a lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, a son for love, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. So the Holy Spirit actually did come down on Jesus in visible shape like a dove. And God said, This is my son whom I love. Nowhere in the Quran does it say the Spirit came down on Muhammad, rested on him. But did you know that your Quran says the Holy Spirit did strengthen Jesus and come with him and assist him? Your Quran agrees with that? Yeah. Yeah, Jesus was uh, strengthened by the Holy Spirit. So that means the Quran agrees with the Bible. Jesus is the servant of Isaiah 42. Oh. <coughs> right? That chapter 2 of the Quran, verse 87, chapter 2, verse yeah, 253, I, I and chapter 5, verse 110, chapter 2, verse 87, chapter 2, verse 253, and chapter 5, verse 110, it says, Jesus was strengthened with the Holy Spirit. Something not said about your prophet. So agreeing with the New Testament, Jesus is the servant of Isaiah 42. 